Good morning, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens, I'm in Sukhothai, Thailand, which is a city that dates back to the 13th century and is known as being the first independent Siamese kingdom. So it's a city of immense history and immense cultural value and also some delicious and unique food. Uh, there's specifically one noodle dish that originates in Sukhothai that's famous throughout Thailand. So today we're gonna go on an ultimate tour of Sukhothai. We're gonna visit some of the ancient ruins and learn about the history of Sukhothai. We'll be eating a lot of delicious food and I'm gonna share this entire experience and guide to visiting Sukhothai and some of the best food with you in this video. I'm at the entrance of the bridge and you can see the monks are beginning to formulate and beginning to form a procession. They're gonna walk down the bridge and some people have gathered to, to give food for the day, to give the morning alms. Uh, but just one quick tidbit about Sukhothai. Sukhothai means the dawn of happiness and was part of a golden age of Siamese, of Thai culture and development. Uh, but that was really cool to see. I think especially because of the atmosphere crossing the bridge, the breeze, it's so peaceful and cool in the morning here in Sukhothai. And conveniently, there is a major market, morning market, just down the road uh, by the same name of the temple. And so we're gonna walk around the market now and hopefully find some breakfast to eat. So the market is called Talat Wat Tra Pang Tong. And you can immediately smell the, the grills, especially the grilled sticky rice going. Oh yeah, that's right, right there. This is the place that you come for everything from fresh vegetables and fruits to pre-cooked foods with both cooked and fresh wet market ingredients. And especially ingredients local to Sukhothai uh, that are used in Sukhothai cooking. So after doing a couple rounds around the market, to be honest, there's not a lot of pre-cooked food here. It's mostly ingredients, fruits, uh, vegetables, herbs. Uh, so we're gonna just stop to get some fruit. She has a nice selection of rose apples and a fruit called mafai. <laughs> And it has a very thick, much thicker skin. Almost looks like a citrus. Look at that. Really thick skin and you can feel the juicy flesh on the inside. There's three almost like garlic bulb sections. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's actually been a long time since I've had that. Maybe I've only had it one, one other time. Mm. It's sour. It's very like slimy pulpy. It kind of tastes like mangosteen, but a small version of mangosteen. But I love the juicy sourness. Any mee thai, mee kha? Ini pen nong koi mee mee thai. Eroi na kha. Pen mang ting na kha. Pen nong koi na. Pa wang nong koi ye ha, mang ting la. Oh. Pen nong koi na, mang mee ma pao ye. Ko ni ao ga koi ya ga. There's not a lot of cooked food, but right at the entrance of the market, you can smell the aroma of the grilling banana leaves. Um, and she has little packets of sticky rice and bananas and coconut. And that just aroma just kind of fills the entrance of the market. And you can see as each packet starts to grill and roast over, it gets more heat. The more oils of the coconut milk of the coconut of the sticky rice come out and blend with that aroma that scorching of the banana leaf and that banana leaf actually adds so much flavor to the rice. The triangular one is one of the unique ones because she said it's banana but I'm not totally sure 
what she meant fully by that. Um, banana and coconut. So aromatic, it's so hot and warm. And so I'm not sure if this one is rice or if it's only banana and coconut. And I love how you've got that char, but just that golden char caramelized from the, the grilling. Oh, it's still so hot. Mm. That's so warm and comforting and sticky. It almost tastes like a banana bread, a dense, thick, hearty banana bread with coconut in it. Might just be pure mashed down ripe banana with coconut in the center. I'm loving this. And that perfect banana sweet, like overly ripe sweet taste, plus the sour tartness of it. That was a good kind of a quiet, relaxing morning market stop. Uh, there's not a lot of food to eat that's cooked, but the good news is we are on our way right now to go eat what is one of the most important. When anyone thinks about Sukhothai, the food of Sukhothai, this is the dish that you cannot leave Sukhothai without tasting. And this dish has made Sukhothai famous. Really quickly, it's important to note that there is the old Sukhothai where the historical park is, where the ancient remains of Sukhothai are from the ancient kingdom. And then there's the new Sukhothai city, which is about 10 kilometers away. And so we just drove, it's like, it's about a 10 minute drive from the old city to the new city. And we are here at a restaurant called Tapui, which is credited with being the original place for Guitiao Sukhothai, which are Sukhothai noodles known throughout Thailand. <laughs> This is the dish you have to eat, you cannot miss when you come to Sukhothai. So I just ordered, uh, she's gonna, you can smell that broth, that soup going. I think she's grabbing the noodles and about to blanch them. for she blanched the noodles as well as some vegetables, specifically long beans, Chinese long beans. That's blanched, that goes into your bowl. And then one of the keys of Guitiao Sukhothai is really the additive ingredients, which there's like about a dozen different additive ingredients. She adds in some, I believe some pickled radish. There's uh, palm sugar, there's chili, there's peanuts. There's a number of different herbs, including green onions, some uh, different pork, some minced pork, some barbecue pork, some garlic. After adding in all those toppings and ingredients and mixing them up, she swiftly just added the broths. But we also got dry version with no soup. Are these the chopsticks up here? Yeah. This is called a pinto, which is the metal, well, a tiffin, a tiffin box. So this would be made to stack. This one is the dry version with the yellow noodles. And then we also got the soup version of Guitiao Sukhothai with rice noodles. And then we also got, this one is pad thai, a type of pad thai. Pad thai Sukhothai, which is a type of pad thai with, you can see there's egg in it. You can see there's long beans. Long beans are very uh, essential in Sukhothai noodles. And then we also just got a, another version of more of like a mixed pork tum yum noodles. I will first squeeze in the lime. Oh, <laughs> she added in pork juices. I think you gotta really mix everything together because there's so many toppings, so many, so many small ingredients that make up this bowl. I'll try the noodles first. Mm. 
It's a really balanced flavor. You definitely taste the porkiness of it. You get the crunch of those long beans, and then it really is a balance of sweet might be the first taste you taste on your tongue, followed by a little bit of spicy, a little bit of tart sourness. The roasted garlic, you taste the, the herb in there, which also makes a difference, and then the peanuts as well. It's a lot of flavors going on at one time. And I'll try the soup version next. It's all the same toppings, but this one is with the soup broth, and then also a different noodle. We got sendek, which are the medium-sized rice noodles. Let me rehydrate them, re-break them up. Again, it's sweet but balanced. The sourness is nice, the lime juice, the, the porkiness of it. And next up for the hantai su hotai. You can really see the egg just folded into it. And again, there's long beans on top, as well as the the pakshi thai, the the kulantro. And then this is served with peanuts on the side, with bean sprouts, chives, and limes to squeeze on. Those noodles are amazingly elasticy, like rubber band elasticy. But oh, that's awesome. Mm. Oh, pad thai is pretty good. It's less of a less of a really complex taste. It's more of a simple taste. The chewy elasticity of the noodles wrapped up in egg. It's the flavor of that herb. It's the flavor of the crunch of those long beans. And then that squeeze of lime. Again, balanced and simple. And as many toppings as they did already add into your noodles, the beauty of eating noodles throughout Thailand is that you can customize them, make them, Add seasoning to them the way you love it. A little bit of chili has to go in. Essential. And make sure you really mix that around. Get it all mingled with the juices and the, the flavors. Mm. Oh yeah. With that extra chili. That bumps up the flavor. That's nice and spicy. It's also important to know that the, the portion size is pretty small. Uh, so if you were hungry, really hungry, you could probably eat maybe four or five bowls. But if it's just a simple breakfast, just a light breakfast, a couple bowls is good. And one more dish, I didn't even realize you ordered it, is mu satay. Uh, so Thai style satay pork and it's served with a sauce. The sauce looks unique, a sauce like I've never seen before. It's very chunky. Look at that glow. I'm not sure if I really like the texture. Kind of like the... It's kind of too soft for me, but also kind of bouncy. We'll try that sauce though. Those are peanuts that are crushed up in there. Pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm not so huge on the satay here. I think I'd stick with the, the suko Thai noodles. Success original Goitiao suko Thai noodles. I especially like the, like the dry noodles with the egg noodles. That was really good. From here, we're driving back to old suko Thai and we're gonna go to the historical park. Alright, let's go. Welcome to the historical part, the historical city of Sukhothai. To my understanding, it's so big, it's so expansive that there's it's divided into five zones. And so you can go to one zone, you pay an entrance fee, um, and then you can go to another zone and there's another entrance fee. But that's a cool way to do it so that you can decide where you wanna go and depending on how long, how much time you have as well. We're gonna hopefully go to two zones, but the first zone that we're gonna go to is 
really an absolute must when you come to Sukhothai, the central zone. Look at that tree. That tree is impressive. Right outside of the gates, they have some bicycle rentals where you can get bicycles. They also have these pretty cool electric golf carts that you can also rent, uh, but we decided to take bicycles. Get some fresh air and the weather is really nice. They have bicycles with kids seats on it. That is perfect. That's what we need right here. Okay, come. Oh yeah. Micah, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm already loving the peacefulness and the breeze as we're cycling through here and we're gonna head straight to Wat Mahathat, which is maybe the most important historical site temple complex in all of Sukhothai. One of those slightly wobbly, wobbly bicycles with the close handlebars. Yeah. Oh, there's mommy. And we just arrived to Wat Mahathat. Something that's unique about Sukhothai is that you can notice the different cultural influences. And so at this temple and throughout the temple sites, you can notice a lot of Khmer influence, uh, but then there's also Northern Thai Lana architecture and influence, and also designs and decorations from Ceylon, from Sri Lanka. Wat Mahathat was built between 1292 and 1347. It was designed, it was built to be the main temple, not only of Sukhothai, the ancient city, but also the entire Sukhothai kingdom. It almost looks like a hypostyle hall here. And then you can see again, the different styles of architecture. I believe this one is the main stupa, uh, which is made to represent a lotus at the top lotus bud at the top. And then throughout the entire temple complex, there's stupas that surround the main stupa. That was fantastic. That was beautiful to see. And moving on to the next temple. Oh yeah. Even you could just take a trip riding a bicycle around. Enjoy it from the bicycle because you can even see the, the ruins and the temples from just riding around. I love how they have, uh, they don't allow any motorized vehicles. Adds so much to the atmosphere. And we're coming up on the next temple. <laughs> Welcome to Wat Si Sawai, and this is known as one of the oldest temples in Sukhothai. And I immediately love that entrance through the red brick and stucco wall. And then again, columns at the entrance, but the real centerpiece are the stupas, which really have a Khmer architecture to them. What's also really cool is just it's surrounded. You can feel the lushness surrounded by huge trees. Again, so quiet. And the temple was founded in the 12th and 13th century where it was originally a Hindu shrine. And the final destination that we're gonna visit in the central zone is Wat Sa Si, which is a stupa, a chedi, built in the Sri Lankan style, which looks like a bell. And the important thing about this chedi is that it's surrounded by water. And I'm amazed at the color, the greenness of that water. It almost looks like, like matcha. 
like green tea. Or is it my sunglasses? No, it really is I like matcha. Okay, and I'm just gonna quickly take a look at here. Just quickly take a look at this stupa and walk around across the bridge. The midday direct sun is absolutely blazing hot. So the plan is, from here we're gonna drive back to the center of uh, Nusukotai, the city. We're gonna have an amazing lunch, a lunch that I'm very looking forward to having. And then later this evening when it cools down a bit and the sun goes down a little bit, we'll return back to the historical park and probably go to the north zone. office chair with beautiful big wooden tables but we're in New Sukotai right along the river at a restaurant called Feng Fa which is specializes in river fish. Owner here is so friendly, she's so nice uh, taking our order and recommending dishes. What a cool place, just a family run restaurant in their yard. You do have uh, over this ledge, there is a semi view, semi river's view. But the river, the water is quite down, yeah. I'm loving this chair. The, yeah, the office chair with the bucket seat, the gushy. Oh man, one of those chairs that's been broken in for 30 years. Look at the, the wear. Beautiful retro wear and the comfort. Just, it's been formed. <laughs> it's been formed. So uh, quickly stepping in the kitchen now with aunties as they're cooking lunch, uh, getting all the ingredients together, the chilies. <laughs> it's fish cakes, fried fish cakes. So you can see, even with looking at them, you can see their texture, the bounciness of them. She did that so fast and it was so hot that it just immediately fogged up my camera screen. But for the tom yum, what a move. She had a whole bowl on the table that was prepared full of uh, mostly holy basil and also some sweet Thai basil and also some uh, dried chilies. Uh, took it off the fire, added some lime juice to give it that real sourness and then poured that onto the fresh herbs without boiling the fresh herbs. That's gonna preserve the flavor of the herbs and so that they're so vibrant and so refreshing within that soup. Wow.
and oh, the way she cooked that just in a, a fury of delicious aromas and flavors. And that last final dish is the black pad pixot, but she took just a raging hot fire in went some chili paste, some more chilies, the fish, all of the green pepper, and that just, just exploded in a flame of smokiness and like directly onto the plate. <laughs> Almost in every dish that she stir fried, at least the two main dishes that she stir fried, she started with not only the chili paste, the curry paste that goes into the dish, but also a heaping spoon, a heaping handful of dried, just dried chilies as well. She used so much spice, she used so much curry paste, she used so many herbs, green pepper, so much basil. It smells unbelievable. It's called chuchi baduk fu, which is one of their signature dishes here, and they take the, the catfish, she explained, which is a roasted grilled catfish, and mince it up, debone it and mince it up, then deep fry that entire uh, wad of minced up catfish so it fluffs up, it balloons up, it turns to like, it turns fluffy. Uh, and then she fried the chilies, the chili paste, she fried some long beans, some herbs, green pepper, fried that, and then refried the fried fluffy catfish within the whole mixture with all that curry paste. And there's tons of chili in here and tons of green pepper. Oh, wow. What a creation. The different layers of texture. The fluffy crispiness of that catfish. The red chili. The sharpness of the green pepper. And then just that citrusiness of the, the kaffir lime leaves that have been fused into the entire dish. What a crunchy dream come true. And the flavor, it's so balanced. It's so smoky from the way she fried it. And it's, you can taste the sweetness coming in the back, but then the, the spiciness tends, starts to build as you keep on chewing. But that crunchiness, that texture, is what really stands out. And I'm just in love with the amount of green peppercorns she added in here. Green pepper being one of my favorite spices, one of my favorite flavors in the entire world, along with chilies. And oftentimes they're used very sparingly. Sometimes for, because they're so intense, the taste is so intense and so spicy, but also because it's expensive. Um, it is a, an expensive ingredient, but she just tossed it in by the fistful. I'll take some of the fish, some of the, there's basil in here. Um, and I can't remember, is this one, do you remember which fish this one is, Ying? Oh, this one is bakang, priksot. Um, it looks like a type of, looks like a type of um, catfish, but priksot, fresh chili, fresh pepper. And you do want to be careful of bones as you tear into the fish. But there's, what I like is that there's almost as many herbs and chilies and green pepper as there is fish. It's a 50-50 ratio. Oh, what a dish. Oh, wow. It's just the layering of flavors that she added to the wok. So the, the dried chili, the curry paste, chili paste, the pepper, more chili, fresh chili, basil, the smokiness of the wok. You notice all of those flavors, all of those, the layers of taste. It would be good even without the fish. Just look at that chunkiness. A variety of chilies and green pepper. And smokiness. Oh, wow. Next dish we got is the tom yum. I think we got it with blachon, which is snakehead fish. Tom yum blachon, yeah. So she blanched off, blanched off the fish. And then again, that move to make this tom yum where she just poured on the hot broth over a the entire bowl was just filled with fresh basil. And that just wilted, wilted down, but not overcooked it. That smells intense, sour, and herbaceous. I'm just gonna taste the, the broth first. Mm. Wow, oh, Mark, yeah. That is the taste of tom yum that I love so much. The intense sourness contrasted by the intense saltiness from fish sauce the herbaceousness comes through the the extremely fragrant dry chilies the shallots in there the lemongrass and the galangal give it a an earthy herbal taste oh man 
amazing. And then finally, we also got some Tadman Pakai. And these are fried fish cakes. They really ballooned up when she fried them. Um, and you can just feel that sponginess. Let's take a cross section. Normally, how they make this, the fish debone it and then pound it uh, into a, until it turns to a sticky paste. And also, it can be mixed with different herbs and oftentimes curry paste as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that's incredible. It's so juicy. And that texture, the bounciness again, like, like a bouncy ball. And you really taste the herb mixture in there as well. Oh yeah, with the sauce, that's amazing. The sauce is sweeter on the sweeter side. You like that because the, the contrast of the saltiness of the fish, fried fish cake with the sweet tart sauce. They even did an amazing job on the fried vegetables. A great mix of broccoli, cabbage, carrots, uh, snow peas, and some Chinese kale. Mm. And again, she fried this in a, a cloud of smoke. But I think this is my favorite dish. The fish fried with fresh chili and dry chili and green peppercorns. And lots of basil. It is just, look at that amount of peppercorn. Oh man, that's just a beautiful thing. Wow. What a dish. And then follow that with some tum yum. The vibrancy of the ingredients, the spices, and not only spicy, but everything is balanced. And then just these amazing family recipes and the amazing family that runs this restaurant. They're so nice too. A spectacular family cooked river fish meal. She's so friendly. Her cooking skills, family recipes, and total bill came to 790 baht. And the portion sizes are big too, but ultra flavor, uh, she can, she can cook some amazingly spicy food. To be completely honest with you, I, Sukhothai noodles are okay, but this is the meal I was looking forward to eating in Sukhothai, and that just fully satisfied my taste buds. We're gonna wait a couple more hours until later this afternoon, um, almost to the evening, and then we'll return back to the historical park. It's about 5.30, the sun has gone down a little bit, so it's not so hot, it's a little bit cooler. We're about to enter into the northern section, northern zone of the Sukhothai Historical Park. Unfortunately, right as I get here, it's starting to rain and the gate is locked. I don't know why it's closed right now, uh, but anyway, you can see it from back, actually, that's a better view. Uh, but Wat Si Chum is known for its 15 meter high seated Buddha. And right now it's just starting to rain, but it actually feels pretty good. That's why it was so hot earlier this day, today when we were biking around, when we were seeing the other historical ruins. I don't think it's gonna last too long though. Clouds don't look too threatening. But very cool to see. I think the, the best sight is actually from, from far over here. A window, like an arched window. Rain didn't last for long. And then on the way out, we asked uh, what time or why the gate is closed. And he said it closes at 4.30. So I guess we got here too late. So if you wanna go inside the, the square, inside the area, uh, you gotta get here before 4.30. But even, even as is, you can pretty much see the entire site and see within. Uh, without even entering that gate. So that also explains why they didn't charge us as we entered. I think that is gonna do it for this tour of Sukhothai. Um, I'm still full from that huge late lunch that we had and oh, that was an amazing meal. Yep. And I'll have all the information, all the 
places that we visited in the description box below in this entire Sukhothai guide, food and travel guide. And I want to say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Something I also, also I loved about Sukhothai is just its peaceful, quiet charm. It's just, it's just relaxing. And yeah, so much history. Uh, I want to say a big thank you for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe and also click the little bell icon and that way you'll immediately get notified of the next video that I publish. Goodbye from Sukhothai and I will see you on the next video.